Hey friends, what's up? Kaz here. Welcome back to another server admin tutorial or bucket spigot plugin tutorial. If you're joining me for the first time, feel free to hit that subscribe button because I do these every week. If you have a suggestion of a plugin you'd like me to do, feel free to comment that in the dribbles below. That would be the comment section for you new people. And I will capture that, give you a shout out when I get to it. Uh, we're on a scheduled list, but we ran into some problems last week. Had to switch out plugins. Um, and jump ahead a week so now we're doing like a bit of a makeup week somebody suggested this one i got into contact with author and he grace graciously gave it to me um to do a tutorial on it so hopefully this is helpful for you guys it's a it is a paid plugin which is it's really slick and it's super simple so shout out to those who did suggest this one zekify being one reese scott uh uk's Finest Modar, I'm guessing that's Mo Modder, I don't know. And Paul G being the last one that uh, suggested it. This is made by Sam CZ Sun. Not sure if that's all one word or, yeah. Anyway, it's great. And what it is, animated message of the day. Now, as you're seeing right here, um, it's not really fired up right now because I've reached the limit, which we'll talk about in a second. But we're just going to do a refresh. And now you can see it, we got a little GIF going here of the guy running. And then we got some new game modes and then survival and then a uh, different view for the players. And then when you hover over a different thing in there, all of this can be animated. animated. There's a bunch of different options for that. And actually, if you join, so we'll join and then uh, we'll disconnect. Now... It shows my, my player face, and then it goes, nothing is impossible with my username. So I'll show you guys how to do that. Um, not a whole lot to do in-game. The only in-game commands are animated MOTD reload, debug, and then uh, troubleshoot. The troubleshoot command is fairly experimental, but it, it is based upon a lot of the frequently asked questions that the author gets. And then the debug you need to do before submitting a ticket with them. Um, there will be a link in the description of if you're having trouble with this plugin, you can ask me and I'll do my best, but you might be better off just going right to the author. He has a whole help uh, ticket section to help people out. So let's get into it and let's hop over to the config file and show you guys what is up because there's not a whole lot to do in the game okay so here we are in our server we're going to go into the plugins you're going to drop your animated motd message of the day in there and then when you start your server up it's going to create this folder as well as all these default things so the first thing we want to look at is the config file now this is is the basic file this is where everything is configured so this is where you set animations you have a few options in here you have a dynamic and a static so static is going to show for anybody who has not already been connected to your server dynamics going to show for people who are connected because then they will be able to pull player information you know like the face and the name all that stuff so you could change these names what they're going to do is they're going to reference files in your animations generic dynamic generic static you can just modify these files if you'd like or you can change the names if, if you want you can also put in different animations for different forced hosts so if you're using bungee and somebody does pvp.mcfriends.us and then it automatically pushes them to the pvp server um, you can have different animations for those servers which is kind of cool so like you can actually connect to my server for three different uh at hosts or whatever uh game.mcfriends.us play.mcfriends.us and fan.mcfriends.us so i could set up different animations depending on which host they're using to connect which is really cool now caching that's where it's going to store the information that it grabbed from those players and in, in seconds that is a lot of seconds and i'm not sure what it is so what it does is it grabs the face from this location it grabs the variable player the value name and then that that size of the face which is really cool now you have your fallback so your fallback is going to happen after your animations have run their loop their duration or maybe there's something an issue with the animation failing to start for them maybe it's delayed for them or they've passed the number of connections per ip address 
that kind of stuff. So then it's going to show the default PNG, which is going to be the GIF, but it's not going to be moving. And then this is the message that it's going to show with your backslash N to, to denote next line. Um, and then when you hover over the status bar, that's what's going to show um, right there for player sample. You can change that to status bar. Um, if you want to customize it to be the same as when it is animated, um, it will show up as an X for the connected uh, signal or whatever on the right, but it's not that big a deal. You could see that too. This is where you set your max connections per IP. So you could lower that down to one. If you put it less than one, animations aren't going to work. Um, I would recommend probably leaving it at five. Um, you can also modify the time formatting. Now, zero is your days, one is your hours, two is your minutes, and three is your seconds. And then you can also change the date format. So the two M's is your month, lowercase d's is your day. So if you're not American, you probably want to switch those to be have days first. Um, and then AM or PM is going to be your A. Uh, update check. You can change your database if you don't want to use the SQL Lite. And now you got some variables that you can put in there uh, of different types of countdown. So you can put a, uh, rather than server or player, you can put countdown, value, and then you could put uh, Christmas or repeating like it's a drop party every hour or so. Um, and it tells you when that stuff's happening. So we'll talk about more, more about variables in there, but you can set up your custom variables right there, which is super cool. So your blacklist, let's talk about that next. That's the next config file in here. Blacklist is going to not display animated messages for anything that's connecting from that IP address. So what you see in here a lot is the website stuff. So the way that websites work is they're gonna ping your server and then they wait for a response. If the response takes too long because it's waiting for an animated message to play or something along those lines, your ser these, these websites will not register your server. It'll say that the server doesn't exist or whatever. So if you're ever having an issue registering on a server that's not on this or on a website that's not on this list, go ahead, go to getip.com, put in the website domain, and that's gonna give you the IP address and you can add it in here and update it. So let's hop into the generic static at first because this is gonna show when players have not connected your server yet. Um, and it's gonna show up in animations. And then your players folder is gonna be where your cache is. And then your GIF is gonna be where the animation is. So that's kind of nice. So your interval is every 100 seconds. Duration is a thousand seconds, which is a while, and then a delay. So you can even put a second, delay, a few seconds delay in there. Um, so the interval is how often it repeats. So the reason this whole file is static is because we've set it to be static. Um, you can have your animation point to your GIF file. Now you want to keep those about 64 by 64, um, kind of small, and then. We want to put it on a loop, so that's true. And then style, there's two different styles. There's optimized and normal. If your GIF is having issues playing, try normal if or optimize. You know, just try one or the other, um, and those will probably work. So intervals per frame, so that's how many, like basically how fast the GIF runs. By one, that's 10 frames per second. So if you want to put it up to two, it would be 20 frames per second, which means it would run faster. Um, all right, so then we're getting into the message of the day here. So this is the first line, so intervals, intervals per frame, that's two, so it's running a little bit faster. And then we have the variable scroller, which is the animation, which means the text is gonna be scrolling, the spacing with value, um, and the value is gonna be what's gonna show up in there. Once again, or you can put color codes in here, which is really nice. Um, one of the values that you put in here is the direction. By default, it's gonna scan to the left, so that's, or something, and the, so you can put the other way of right, which is what you saw on that example. Then the second line is gonna be intervals per frame, which is one, so it's gonna be a little bit slower. Typewriter, which means it's, it's typing it out each line at a time. And then the delimiter basically is the cursor at the front of it. And uh, you know, it's got the color code, color code, and then backslash, backslash. And then that is the what's at the front of that cursor. Um, and then the value is what shows up there. Okay, so the status bar is gonna be what is shown for that section rather than just the numbers. You can put players and then the numbers in there, um, the variable being server and then the value being 
uh, referencing that variable, which is really cool. I'll put a link to the variables website so you guys, there's a lot more that you can do with them. The I think he uses pretty much every example here, so you can kind of just pick and choose with what's there. Now the player data, that's what's going to show up when you hover over the number of players on there, and then line one, two, three, four, five, and then um, you can, that's kind of the same thing. Uh, the thing about the status bar is if you change that, it's going to think that you have a different version so that red X is going to show up, but it's not that big a deal. You probably didn't even notice it when I was showing you a minute, minute ago, so it should be fine. All right, so now let's move on to the dynamic. This is getting a little bit long, but so the type, other type is dynamic, pretty much the same thing in their animation being face rather than, than um, the GIF file in there. So by default, the first line is pretty much the same. The second line is going to be nothing is possible, and then it's going to use this player variable here, and then uh, it's going to show the player's face there, which is really cool. Um, status bar is pretty much the same. Player data is pretty much the same. Um, the other difference is uh, back here, player sample here for the fallback message, that's different um, than these ones over here. So that's kind of cool. So you got your static, dynamic, static is for people who haven't connected, dynamic is for those who have, and then you have your fallback, which is like once the animations have run their course or if there's any kind of issue. So I uh, probably want to modify the fallback to be um, something simple there. So let's hop back into the game. I'll talk about variables here real quick and then uh, we'll wrap it up. Okay, so the variables thing, which is kind of runs this whole animations is you you have your variables, which is like that carrot variable name and then space value equals whatever it is and then a space setting equals the setting. Now that's really basic and that's over over the top you can see all the examples either on the wiki or in the default config here and that'll help you out so like for example if you want to do any kind of animations that would be the caret typewriter equals and then you have your pause you have a value you have your delimiter and your frequency um this is pretty much just playing around with it it's going to take you a little bit to figure out exactly what kind of animations you want and all that but i hope i hope that this helps you get started and uh, feel free to ask questions. There's a great uh, ticket page for that the authors put together. Be sure to run that uh, animated MOTD space debug before you contact them because they're going to ask you a lot of questions so they understand what you're running before they can help you out. Anyway, this is Cost from McFriends reminding you all, enjoy the game. God bless.